The term landscape is critical to the vision of the National Landscape Conservation System. Instead of preserving only small pieces of land surrounded by development, the BLM has the opportunity to protect large swaths of hundreds of thousands of acres, ideally free of intrusive power lines, roads, or buildings. Arizona's Agua Fria National Monument contains hundreds of archaeological structures and sites that can be experienced in the original, unchanged landscape where ancient civilizations worked, lived, and hunted. Another example is the Grand Canyon, Parashant National Monument, a million-acre wonderland that encompasses large parts of the watershed of the Grand Canyon adjacent to the park. These new protected areas reflect a more recent understanding of the importance of maintaining the integrity of complex ecosystems, the need to protect key watersheds, and the historic value of preserving communities of archaeological resources, not just a site here or there. The conservation system's sweeping, contiguous landscapes also provide the connective tissue that sustains biodiversity and seasonal migration patterns for countless wildlife species. The lands of the BLM hold more wildlife habitat than those of any other federal agency. For the brown bear and grizzlies, antelope and elk, moose and deer, bighorn sheep, scores of rare threatened or endangered species like the desert tortoise, the golden eagle, the cutthroat trout. Some 17 million acres of wetlands support millions of resident and migratory fowl. And no one knows how many fish swim in the rivers, streams and lakes of the BLM. In total, BLM lands are host to 228 plant and animal species listed as threatened or endangered and more than 1,500 sensitive species. And these lands provide 90 million acres of key habitat for the big game such as antelope, mule deer, bighorn sheep and elk. The lands are also important for 400 species of songbirds and the future of imperiled sage-grouse populations in the West will depend on the BLM's protection of their habitat. Millions of Americans have discovered that recreational opportunities abound on BLM lands. In 2004, some 54 million people visited these areas to hike, camp, picnic, hunt, fish, ride horses, rock climb, raft, and canoe. BLM lands offer a rugged alternative to the more crowded and better known national parks. Unlike the national parks, BLM's conservation system promotes little infrastructure or roads. These lands are so remote and so undeveloped, you can still get lost in them. BLM lands are also increasingly valuable places to escape from our stressful city and suburban lives to the healing touch of solitude, silence, and serenity found only in the wilderness. In the lower 48 states, nearly two-thirds of BLM lands are within an hour's drive of urban areas, and more than 20 million people live within 25 miles of BLM lands. Given their unique value, it's no surprise that the protection of these natural treasures provides proven economic benefits for local and gateway communities, as confirmed by a 2004 report from the Sonoran Institute. Unfortunately, even BLM's national monuments are really not protected yet, because the plans that will guide their management are still being developed and there are many more BLM lands that are worthy of protection as national monuments and as wilderness. The budget for BLM's conservation system is a fraction of that of the National Wildlife Refuge System or the National Park Service, two systems that are widely recognized as being severely underfunded. With such an inadequate budget, the BLM cannot effectively monitor and protect its historic sites while ancient petroglyphs and other cultural treasures are damaged by looting, vandalism, and general neglect. Meanwhile, expanding cities and suburbs put pressure on BLM lands as never before. At some national monuments, visitor numbers have quadrupled in the past five years, 
and all-terrain vehicles are bringing thousands of riders into once remote BLM lands. As dirt bikes and other off-road vehicles push farther into the backcountry, their irresponsible use is scarring our finest western lands, damaging streams and displacing traditional visitors. Perhaps nothing is changing the face of our western lands more dramatically, however, than the rush to open more and more areas to oil and gas development. A June 2005 report by the Government Accountability Office found that the BLM's rush to drill keeps the agency too busy to monitor and enforce clean air and water laws, even though industry has thousands more permits than it could drill in years. Immediately threatened by the rush to drill are prime BLM lands that deserve but have not yet received protection within the National Landscape Conservation System. Since 2003, more than 65,000 acres of citizens' proposed wilderness have been leased for oil and gas development in Colorado and more than 160,000 acres in Utah, with the numbers escalating rapidly. The BLM has even tried to hand over to the oil and gas companies part of Utah's famed Desolation Canyon and other lands on the doorstep of Dinosaur National Monument. Even in the face of such threats, there is cause for optimism for those who love America's public lands. Diverse groups of Americans are increasingly speaking out in defense of our last and best Western lands. Ranchers, hunters, anglers, outdoor recreationists, government leaders, progressives, and conservatives. Together, they have helped repel efforts to recklessly expand oil and gas drilling near communities and sensitive watersheds and to stop the short-sighted sale of vast amounts of national forest and BLM lands. Thousands of other folks are pitching in to protect BLM lands by volunteering. They are maintaining trails, restoring habitat, and speaking out on behalf of our finest western lands, calling their local officials and representatives in Congress, engaging their communities, writing letters to the editor, and attending public meetings. No other nation has ever had an inheritance like the vast reach of the American West. It has deeply shaped our heritage and our national identity. But if we are to maintain this demanding inheritance, we must insist on and contribute to the prudent and wise management of our national treasures, not just for current generations, but for those still to come.